Here's a question for you. If you're buying a new laptop in the second half of 2024, do you think it will be powered by AMD, by Intel, or might it be powered by Qualcomm? That's right, Qualcomm, the people who make chips for phones. What the heck is that all about? Qualcomm is well known for their range of Snapdragon processors that go inside mobile devices, in particular smartphones. So what are we to make of a tweet from Cristiano Amon, the boss of Qualcomm, who says he'll be doing a keynote at Computex this year and he'll be talking about generative AI and next-gen PCs? Well, he's talking about Snapdragon X Elite. This chip is an SoC that's going to be used in laptops and those laptops will run Windows. And we're not talking Chromebooks, we are talking full-on laptops. The SoC has 12 CPU cores and is fabbed at 4 nanometer by TSMC. Furthermore, two of the cores can boost up to 4.3 gigahertz. We're talking about proper clock speeds. And look, support for LP DDR5X memory with a huge amount of bandwidth and a load of cash. As we can see from this product summary, this processor is a serious piece of work. It's there to take on the high end, both AMD and Intel. We can understand why Snapdragon X Elite could bring a smile to Qualcomm's face, but we have questions, and the first one is, who will manufacture the laptops using this new Qualcomm chip? And the answer is some very significant laptop companies. Acer, Asus, Dell, HP, Lenovo, and Microsoft are all serious people. Samsung laptops in the UK, rather less so perhaps, but that also sounds interesting. And we saw at the recent Snapdragon Summit some quotes from various of these partners. We can't necessarily put a huge amount of store by these comments, but they do look promising. So let's look deeper into Snapdragon X Elite. It would seem the Config A rated 80 watts might be comparable to one of AMD's new laptops, with high-end graphics. The Config B rated at a mere 23 watts looks more comparable to a thin and light powered by Intel's new Core Ultra or Meteor Lake. And then Qualcomm hits us with some benchmarks. You will note here they're referring to Orion. That was the code name for this chip during development. Also, they're comparing to Intel Core i9-13980HX. So 13th gen HX, high power laptop processor, not Core Ultra. And you will see it's pretty much a straight head-to-head -head fight. However, same performance, 70% less power for Qualcomm. And then in this Geekbench chart, Qualcomm is referring to the X Elite processor rather than the Orion. We're seeing Config A and Config B, and they're comparing to Core i7-13800H and Ryzen 9 7940HS, and also to the M2. For me, the point of interest here is the two Snapdragon X Elites have fairly similar performance, even though the power rating is quite radically different. Moving on to Cinebench 2024 single-threaded, and Qualcomm claims the win. In Cinebench 2024 multi-threaded, they're claiming a big win. UL Procyon AI. You have to take this one with a pinch of salt. It's quite clear that Qualcomm is using dedicated AI hardware and claiming a massive win over the competition. And then some graphs that show Qualcomm beating the competition once again. As this is a system on chip, naturally it includes graphics. And they claim a big win over competitor A, handily coloured in blue. And also a win over competitor B, in orange rather than red. And naturally this chip is built for AI. And we see here a dedicated Qualcomm AI engine. And look, it has 45 tops. That's about three times the rating of Intel Core Ultra. And Qualcomm claims that their NPU with 45 tops has 100x the performance of an unspecified competitor. And just before Mobile World Congress in Barcelona, they released some updated information. And here we see a test against Intel. And yes, indeed, three times faster. You might think these claims by Qualcomm would give Intel in particular some pause for concern. However, I'm not so sure. 
Intel recently held an event called Intel Foundry Direct Connect, where Intel CEO Pat Gelsinger took to the stage, and he was talking a big game. Hey, welcome, welcome to Direct Connect 2024. And when I came back to the job, I said, we have three goals. We're gonna rebuild this iconic company, the company that Grove, Moore, and Noise built. Second, we're gonna restore the critical role it has and plays in the technology industry writ large. And third, we're gonna rebuild Western manufacturing at scale, resilient, sustainable, trusted supply chains. Gelsinger talked about a number of things, but in particular he focused on the Intel 5 nodes in four years. It's been three years since Gelsinger returned to Intel, and Intel is firmly on track to deliver on 5 nodes in four years. And to prove the point, he posed with five wafers, one for each of those five nodes. The five nodes in four years goes up to the Intel 18A process, which features both ribbon FET transistors and also power veers and backside power supply. And Gelsinger was proud to announce that Clearwater Forest is taped out using Intel 18A. But then he talked about beyond five nodes in four years. And here we see Gelsinger holding a wafer fabricated on Intel 14A, a process that has not been previously talked about. We don't know what these chips are. And he talked about variants on the various processes. So we have Intel 20A, 18A, and then Intel 18A P, which has a performance improvement. We can also see Intel 3, Intel 3T, where T stands for through silicon veers, Intel 3E, feature extension, and Intel 3PT, P for performance improvement, and T for through silicon veers. And then we see this interesting chart. This photo is provided by Hardware Looks, who were invited to the event. Do please follow the link to read their original news piece. And you can see that towards the end of this decade, at the top of the chart, not only do we have Intel 14A, but we also have Intel 10A. This is a process that has not been previously announced. And the big news from Gelsinger is that Intel has been reorganized. Intel Foundry Services, now named Intel Foundry, the rest of Intel, Intel Products. This is a renaming, a reorganization, a new organizational model for Intel that includes our three major elements, technology development, right, leading bending physics, you know, our global manufacturing and supply chain, and our Intel Foundry services and ecosystem operation, all three together, Intel Foundry, a rebuilding of Intel. And for that, as I said, we're not fixing one company, we're establishing two vibrant new organizations, Intel Foundry to serve internal and external customers at scale, to manage supply chains, to assure capacity corridors, and Intel products, our client, data center and networking products, two distinct and separate organizations. And then Gelsinger appeared to lay his cards on the table. Intel is currently the number three foundry in the world. The leader is TSMC, second by revenue is Samsung, and Intel aims to be the number two foundry. He also gave us a bit of a history lesson. In the past, Europe and America had 50% of the chip supply, and Asia had the other 50%. That has now completely changed. The vast majority of leading edge chips come out of a very small geographical region, Taiwan and South Korea. And for that, we said, yes, get to be a large, meaningful, the second largest foundry, but become the world's most sustainable foundry, the world's most resilient foundry, because that's exactly what the world requires. And we're seeing global politics has been dominated for the last 50 years by where the oil reserves are. COVID was a big wake-up call you know, for us all. You know, an auto factory building a $50,000 car being stopped for a $1 semiconductor. How did that happen? Semis, advanced computing, is to the world's geopolitic what oil has been for the last 50 years. But stunningly, you know, in 1990, 80% of the semiconductors were built in U.S. and Europe. Today, 80% in a small concentrated area in Asia. You know, we've seen this long, steady decline, right, in terms of our supply chains for the world. 
Nothing should be reliant on a single port, a single country, a single place uh, in the world. We need resilience, ac resilient access to supply chains and capacity in the right regions at the right time. Intel is very keen to move the focus of production to Europe and the USA, as we can see in this hardware looks photo. But goodness me, building new production plants and fabs, that's going to cost plenty of money. How will you do that, Intel? Where's the money going to come from? It was a proud day when I got to stand on the White House lawn when we signed into law the US CHIPS Act. You know, a moment to rebuild the supply chains of the world. And with that, it was a thrill to do so with the president, but the tireless championing that we saw through Secretary of Commerce uh, Gina Raimondo, and it's my pleasure to have her join us now here at Intel Direct Connect. If you want to find a precedent of when the United States government has acted this strategically in terms of industrial strategy, I think you'd have to go back 60 years to the space race I think that's the closest parallel, a time when the federal government came together with the private sector and academia at every level to spur innovation and ensure America's technological leadership in the face of fierce competition. The fact that we are so overly dependent to a couple of countries in Asia to access semiconductor chips that we need for life-saving medical equipment, cars, uh, every piece of technology showed us uh, we got to get to work. We need to get back to work making more chips in America. Uh, thank you. And, you know, maybe say, you know, the CHIPS Act, are we, are we done? Do we, you know, do we have the, all the R&D underway? Do we need a CHIPS too, Secretary? Um, you know, I'm out of breath running as fast as I can to implement CHIPS 1, but... <laughs> Uh, and it's amazing. We were Global Foundries yesterday, billion five investment. That's the third of our investments. And I think, you know, there'll be a steady drumbeat of, a, of those announcements to come in the coming weeks and months. Yeah, thank you. And uh, maybe, uh, you know, just as we finish up here, obviously we haven't announced our CHIPS grant yet, yet, very soon. Right, we're uh, making that happen. Uh, but maybe just a final message for this audience. You know, and here, the Intel Foundry Day, what's your message to them? Intel is this country's championship company. It's an American champion company of a very huge role to play in this revitalization and I just, uh, I'm excited. I'm ready to go. We, we, we did a big announcement yesterday. There's more to come. And I believe we will be very, very successful. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. And now we understood Intel's strategy to become the number two foundry in the world based on the CHIPS Act for America by focusing on production and packaging in the USA and Europe. It was time for Intel executive Stuart Pan to take to the stage where he introduced Intel's closest partner. I want to talk about our most important partner. And that partner is Rene Haas from ARM. You know, it's really unusual for an Intel business unit leader to make the statement ARM is my most important business partner. And in what kind of universe would you have ever thought that you'd see ARM and Intel standing together? But you know, this is a brave new world for us. And when we started talking with Renee and his team about a partnership, you know, we rapidly came to the realization that 80% of the wafers TSMC runs has an ARM device in them. There is no way you can be in the foundry business without a partnership with ARM. And so we kicked out discussions months ago. Yep. They have been absolutely fascinating, and I think you'd like to probably tell us about a few of them, starting with perhaps the announcements you made this morning. Yeah, well, thank you for having me. Um, as you said, this is a, a bit of strange bedfellows. I was trying to think of a parallel that I might give I relative to the story, and the <laughs> only thing I could kind of think of is for those who can harken back is when Walt Mossberg asked Steve Jobs what it was like to see iTunes run on Windows. Yeah, the transparency is, is required. You know, we're working on, on, on cutting-edge technology. When you talk about 18A and, and System Foundry and the packaging, 
This is uh, the tip of the spear in terms of innovation. So when the engineering teams are working together, we need uh, total transparency, uh, seamless communication. We need to act like we're working with Intel Foundry and not the side of the house that we might be considered a competitor. And you guys have been terrific. Totally appreciate the partnership and everything we're doing together Lucky and everything day. we're going to do together. Yeah, thank you, Thanks man. again. Thanks all. To return to my original point, when Qualcomm shows off their Snapdragon X Elite at Computex in just a few months time, I shall be paying very close interest and I cannot wait to have a few laptops on review. In the first instance, I'm sure both AMD and Intel will be put out by the new Qualcomm chips as they'll be providing stiff competition for what is currently a duopoly. But that's the way of the world. However, in a few years time, the situation could change quite dramatically particularly depending on what happens up the South China Sea in Taiwan. As we know, President Xi has said things are going to change and we get the impression he's talking about by 2030. After all, he's not a particularly young man anymore. So as America works hard and spends money to ensure resilience of supply for silicon chips, Intel Foundry is going to gain in prominence. And it wouldn't surprise me in the slightest if Intel Foundry sees Apple, AMD, NVIDIA, Qualcomm, and every other company on the planet as a potential customer. Intel products will be just one customer among many. Intel Foundry is going to be the chip supplier to the world, or at least that's Intel's plan. But in the first instance, I'm looking for Qualcomm to make a really good laptop chip, and then we'll see just how well Windows 11 runs on ARM architecture.